Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet this super easy beginner crochet scarf. This is made with simple stitches and it is a self-striping, really bright, fun yarn. So it makes for a really fun project if you are just starting out crocheting or you've been crocheting for a while. Um, I've been crocheting for a while and I have to say I really enjoyed making this scarf. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to uh, either leave it as a kind of classic shaped rectangle scarf, or if you like, you can add this fun fringe to the bottom as well. So I'm going to give you two sort of finishing options for that. Now this scarf is nice and long and wide. It's a generous scarf. I will show you how to uh, make your scarf narrower or shorter if you want to resize it. It's super easy to do that. There's no special stitch counts because this is a beginner scarf. But the scarf I'm going to be making in this video measures about 8 inches wide and it's about 68 inches long. So you can wrap it a couple times around your neck if you like. Now just as a side note, if you do choose to add the fringe, these measurements are without the fringe. So if you want to add some fringe to your scarf like I have, just note that it will add a little bit of extra length to your scarf. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a ruler or tape measure is very helpful when you're making a scarf to kind of measure as you go along. We're gonna be using a six millimeter J crochet hook for this project and our yarn. I'm gonna be using a yarn called Hopscotch from Red Heart. This is a really fun yarn. It's colorful and pretty. So it makes for an interesting project because it's constantly changing color. You can see, now this is a different colorway, but you can kind of see how the colors play out a little bit. The yarn is a four or a medium on the yarn weight scale. So if you want to substitute or kind of look in your yarn stash first before you start this project, just look for that four or medium on the yarn weight scale. Now this particular yarn recommends an eye hook, a 5.5 millimeter eye hook. I bumped it up to a six millimeter J hook just to give our scarf a little bit more openness and drape. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so to begin, we're going to put a slip knot on our hook. So let me just scoot my yarn over a little bit. Wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up the loop and tighten. So like I said before, we're going to be making this scarf for the absolute beginner. So if you want just a quick project too and you know how to crochet, this is also really fun, especially with this quick color changing yarn. But I'm gonna go really slow in the beginning and then we'll pick up speed gradually. So what we want to do is we have our slip knot on our hook. We're going to make our starting chain. This will be the bottom of our scarf and we're going to work upward. So our scarf has 24 chains. Now as a side note, there's no special stitch count. So if you want something a little narrower, just make less chains. If you want something really wide, you can make more chains. You can make lots and lots of chains and even make this into the width of a shawl if you like. So we're going to chain 24 to begin. So to make a chain, wrap the yarn around the hook and pull it through the loop. Okay, that's one. Wrap the yarn around the hook, pull it through the loop. That's two. Around the hook, pull it through. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Now let's pick up speed a little bit. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. So as you can see, we've already started to change colors just in our starting chain. So this, this yarn you'll really cruise through the colors. And as you unravel it a little bit, to me on the ball it looks more solid and heathered, almost like, like heathered yarn, like see this blue? But when you unravel it, you can start to see it's very speckly, which is, is really just a fun yarn. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is begin row one. Now we're gonna work a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. This loop here does not count. So let's count one, two, three, and four. So that chain right there, we're going to work a double crochet. 
Now I have a whole separate video for double crochet stitches if you'd like to practice a little bit before you come back to your project. So to make a double crochet, wrap the yarn around your hook, insert the hook into the chain, bring up a loop, you'll have three loops on your hook, wrap yarn around hook, bring through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops on your hook. Okay, so that was the double crochet. Let's continue across and work a double crochet in each chain, okay? So let's wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook into the next chain, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. We're just gonna do this all the way across. Now I'm gonna pick up speed a little bit, but if you need to slow it down, you can just back up a little bit and just rewatch that very first double crochet that was nice and slow. Okay, we're just working a double crochet in each chain. And as you can see, our yarn has changed colors once again. All right, wrap yarn around hook, insert it into that next chain, bring up a loop, three loops around the hook, yarn around hook, bring through the first two loops, yarn around hook, bring through the last two loops, okay? Now I wanna point something out. Sometimes yarn manufacturers, when in the manufacturing process if something breaks or they need to tie on the new yarn they've manufactured, you might come across a little knot like this. Don't worry too much about that, just keep working and it should blend. So I just wanted to point that out because I happened to come across one. So let me just show you. We're gonna work our stitches just as we normally would and that knot will just sort of blend into your work. So let's pause for a moment. You can see it sort of just blends right in, okay? Now you might be able to see it a little bit, but by the time you go to wear it and everything, you'll, you'll forget it's even there, okay? So just work your double crochets in each chain. And this will give you a nice, uh, sized scarf width-wise. And again, if you need to change the width a little bit, you can just add or subtract the starting chains from what I did. Okay, we're coming up to the end of the row here. And we just have a few chains left. Already our scarf is super colorful. All right, I'm on the second to last chain here. And let me just get, get a little bit more yarn to get us to the end. And look, see that very last chain? There will be a knot there from where we started, but you can just work right into that chain. And this end here that's hanging down, we will worry about that later. We'll just keep on going for now. Okay, so row one is complete and it should look kind of like that. Nice width, nice display of color. Let's move on to row two. Row two is the row that we'll be repeating for the rest of our scarf, okay? So chain three, one, two, three, and turn. Now this double crochet, or this chain three rather, counts as a double crochet. See how it almost looks like one of the double crochets? So we're not gonna go down into the base of this. See how we have a sort of like a loop at the bottom? We're not gonna work into that. We're gonna go to the next one. So that first stitch that you come to, see that next loop? We're gonna work into that because this one counts as one of our double crochets. Visually, it will look like one of them. So work a double crochet into that stitch that I pointed out, a double crochet into the next stitch. The stitches are the little loops at the top of each one of these double crochet posts. See how I have a loop at the top? We're just gonna work right into that. See that stitch at the top there? Just work right into that stitch. And we're just gonna do this all the way across. And I think our yarn is getting ready to change colors once more. Now, I like to use multicolor yarn like this for beginning projects or if I'm teaching someone how to crochet because you can really see, you know, when I'm working this purple, we're gonna be approaching the blue section. It keeps the project interesting, first of all, but you can also really see what's happening because uh, each row is a different color. For example, you can really see that bright yellow starting chain we did at the beginning. So 
it makes it easy to see everything. Okay, now I'm just working double crochets in each stitch all the way across. And this project is uh, quite easy to memorize very quickly, almost instantly. So you can kind of tote this around with you. You don't need a complicated uh, pattern or written instructions or you don't need to do any counting or anything like that. It's just a really quick little project. And this is a perfect project to uh, teach someone how to crochet with too. They can make their very first scarf. Okay, so we're at this last stitch of our row. We're just gonna work a double crochet in that last stitch. And now we're at the turning chain. Remember we did the chain three and turned? So right in that turning chain space. Now you can work into the chain. You can really do either one, but I'm gonna work into the space. So right into that turning chain space, work a double crochet. And that will finish off your row nicely, okay? Now, row two is complete. So what you're gonna do to continue to work on your scarf is repeat row two over and over and over again until your scarf is as long as you would like it to be. Everybody likes a different length of scarf. And I just wanna talk about that just for a moment before we continue. Some people like a very long scarf and they like to wrap it around their neck a bunch of times. So just keep working rows and rows and rows until your scarf is as long as you'd like it to be. But a general rule of thumb that I like to follow is to go from your hip, wrap it around your neck, around the back of your neck, and come back down onto your other hip. So it's like a hip to hip type of measurement. Now you could go a little longer or shorter, depending on what you like, but I generally follow that hip to hip guideline loosely just to give an idea. That's easy too to ask, if you wanna make it for someone, to ask them what their hip to hip measurement is. So you can use that guideline or just try it on until it's as long as you would like it to be. So I'm gonna continue working my scarf and then we'll rejoin in just a moment and I'm gonna show you how to finish off your scarf and how to take care of these ends that you'll have on your scarf as well. Okay, so I wanted to show you one more thing. Before you, we get to the end of the scarf, I still have one more ball to uh, crochet up, but I don't have quite enough yarn to finish uh, a new row. So we're ready to join on a new ball. Now if you're doing multiple colors, I'm kind of doing a self striping here, so I'm just going to join on a new ball of yarn. But if you're doing a striped scarf, you'll probably do this a little bit more often. So just work those last couple of stitches. This is the way I like to do it. And as you crochet more, you may find a way you like to do it instead. If you know other ways to join yarn rather than what I'm going to show you, please feel free to do that instead. So what we're gonna do is I just wanna trim off some of this excess because we don't need all that. And then what we're gonna do, I just worked the last stitch and we're going to fasten it off. So wrap the yarn around the hook and pull it through. Now we're ready to join on the new yarn. Now some people like to just tie them together. There's other ways to do it. I like to just cut the yarn and tie the new yarn right on. Okay, so what you do is insert your hook back into that stitch you just worked, bring the new yarn through just like that and then you can just tie it right on. Give yourself a little bit of a tail because later on you'll want to weave that in and you don't want it to be too short. So go ahead and just tie that right on, just like that. Now these tails we'll deal with at the end of the video, but reinsert your hook right back into that same exact stitch and then you can do your chain three and then you're ready to begin the new row, okay? So you can just Keep working all the way across your stitches, okay? And then you can just work until your other yarn is gone as well. One more little thing I wanted to point out before we finish up our scarf is that when you work your last stitch, I know earlier in the video I had mentioned you can work right into the turning chain space to do that very last double crochet. Now depending on your tension or the thickness of yarn that you're using, you might get a gap that you're not really crazy about. So you can also alternatively work into the topmost chain. So you can count one, two, three chains up of your turning chain and work a double crochet into that chain. It's kind of up to you what you'd rather do when you're making just a really simple scarf like this, but it might help to kind of uh, tighten that up a little bit. Now see, I worked into the space in this last one and then this one I worked into the chain. So you can kind of see uh, there's a gap here and then it's kind of more snug right there. So you can kind of see that. 
Okay, so just keep working your rows until you get through your yarn or your scarf is as long as you want it to be. And then in just a moment, we're gonna work on weaving the ends in. Okay, so I'm just putting that very last stitch in. And again, you can do it in that turning chain, that topmost turning chain, or you can do it in the turning chain space. It's up to you. Okay, so the scarf is complete. It's nice and long. It's got a lot of beautiful color. So what we're gonna do to finish this scarf up is simply cut the yarn, and then to fasten off, all you're gonna do is wrap the yarn around your hook and then just pull it all the way through that loop and tighten to get that knot nice and secure. Now you'll probably have a couple of ends from where you joined the new ball, where you began and where you ended up. So we're gonna go ahead and weave in all of our ends. So go ahead and thread your tapestry needle. And when you have a project that's striped or lots of colors like this project, you're gonna try and stay, see this tail that I have here is white with some pink flecks and it, it uh, is the same as this top area here. Try and stay in that top area with the same color tail and it'll blend a lot more nicely than if you try and go into some of these other colors. It'll sort of stick out if you deviate. So weave it in one direction going over and under the loops of the stitches and then pull it through. And then to help lock that tail in, what I like to do is come back in the other direction and that helps quite a bit. Sometimes when you launder these items, the, ta the tails can pop back out in the wash from the agitation. You can just weave those in or trim them if you need to. Okay, so grab your scissors and trim the yarn and then you can kind of straighten things out and get that tail situated. So our scarf is complete. I'm gonna go ahead and weave in these other ends now, and then I'm gonna show you one more thing. Okay, so I went ahead and wove in all the ends, and our scarf is complete. It is so much fun, just full of beautiful color. Now, you can be done with your scarf at this point and have simply the rectangle. Very easy stitches, very quick to make because the yarn is nice and chunky. However, the lovely little person who requested this scarf from me also wanted fringe. So if you wanna add some fringe onto your scarf, I'm just gonna show you really quick because it really adds something to your scarf. And I had a little bit of yarn left, so I had just enough to do that. So if you want to do that, just make sure you reserve some yarn at the end. So for fringe, it's super easy to make. You'll want your hook again, the same hook that you used, and your scissors. So what you're simply gonna do is cut some yarn, and a ruler is helpful, but not necessary. I'm gonna go by using the width of the scarf as my guide, so let me slide this over. So we're, what we're gonna do is we're just going to cut pieces of yarn, see how I'm measuring across, and then grabbing it, and then folding it over, just like that, so it's double the width of the scarf, okay? So let's cut a few of those. And you can really do this however you like. And it doesn't have to be perfect because at the end with fringe, we're going to give it sort of a haircut. So I'm just gonna cut a few of these to show you. I'm not gonna cut all the pieces. So what we're gonna do for fringe is grab one of the pieces that you just cut and see how we have two strands and then because we folded it in half, there's a loop at the top. See that loop? So starting from one end, you're gonna take your crochet hook and you can absolutely do this with anything, including knit pieces and such. And insert your hook into that stitch all the way on the edge, and then bring, see how I'm hooking the loop? And you're gonna bring that loop through, just like that. Now I'm gonna slide my hook down and reach down and grab those other two strands that were hanging down and pull through. And that's how I like to make my fringe. And then just tighten it up a little bit. And there's one, piece of fringe. Now I made it a little bit long on purpose because we want to trim up the bottom when we're finished. So let me show you that one more time. Grab your yarn, go into this next stitch, and pull up that loop, pull it through. Now take your yarn, wrap it around your hook, and then just simply pull it through. Now I didn't catch both of the strands, so you might need to grab it with your hand. There you go and then just pull it through and tighten. And that'll stay put, nice and neat, okay? All right, so we have a little bit more fringe here. I'm gonna keep going across, and then we'll rejoin in just a moment if you are adding the fringe onto your scarf, and I'm gonna show you how to give it a quick little trim. 
<clears throat> and I'm going to show you how to give it a quick little trim at the end. Okay, so I've added all the fringe, and it's looking a little wild right now, but we're just going to give it a quick little haircut. So let me just slide everything up. I think it actually looks pretty neat, like unicorn hair or something like that, but we do need to neaten up the bottom a little bit. So what you want to do is sort of comb it out with your fingers and decide how long you want your fringe to be. Do you want it to look longer and kind of like a boho look, or do you want it to look neater, you know? I'm gonna do like a, kind of like a straight line. And I really like this purple strand here, the uh, length that that's getting. So just like with hair, you don't wanna cut too much. You can always cut more off if you decide to later. But we're just gonna try and neatly cut all of this pretty neon yarn. I think the, the uh, fringe really adds to it. We're just going to be nice and neat. Now, the plies, yarn is made with, uh, most of the time, it's made by twisting multiple strands. So um, the plies are going to come apart a little bit with fringe, but that's okay. It'll, it'll just make it look a little fluffier. Okay? So we're just neatly cutting it across. And then just give it another quick kind of combing. Um... This was in the inside of the yarn ball, the, the remainder of the yarn, so it's a little bit uh, wavy right now. But it'll straighten out when the person wears the scarf. If you have yarn that's very wavy or almost has like a crimped look, if you know what uh, crimpers were back in the 80s, um, sometimes yarn can have a crimped look if it was sort of folded up and scrunched up inside the yarn ball. Um, you can mist it with some water and just kind of comb it back out and let it sort of hang to dry, and that will straighten it out quite a bit. But just wearing it really will help it relax somewhat. So our fringe is finished, and it looks really stunning and fun. I really love this scarf. I know the person that I made this for is going to love it as well. So that is how you make an easy beginner crochet scarf. I hope you learned a little bit um, by watching this video. And for those of you who are seasoned crocheters, this is a wonderful gift idea and something you can whip up very, very quickly as we approach the gift giving season. So that is how you crochet this beginner's crochet scarf. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again. Oh,